Imagine a world where cells and tissues can be engineered to create proteins that help the body generate its own healing process. With the work being done by Haifa-based Pluristim Therapeutics, this is no longer science fiction. Please sit back and join me in watching the following film. Tensions high and getting higher on the Korean Peninsula as the world anticipates another missile test from North Korea. An ultra-powerful stream of radioactive vapor releases uranium and graphite over hundreds of meters around the plant. It was a natural disaster that led to one of the worst nuclear accidents in history. Earthquake and tsunami that triggered a meltdown at Japan's Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant in 2011. Germany is becoming increasingly worried about neighboring Belgium relaunching nuclear reactors, fearing it could result in disaster. Iran's nuclear and ballistic missile activity poses a real threat, not just to the United States, but to Iran's neighbors and our allies. The U.S. government is investing in an Israeli company's groundbreaking treatment for deadly radiation exposure. Stored at 320 degrees below freezing, the medicine in these vials is being tested for a worst-case scenario. It's now my pleasure to call on Yaki Anai, CEO and President of Pluristim Therapeutics. Good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, my name is Yaki Anai, I'm President and CEO of Pluristim Therapeutics. In the last, in the last five years in Pluristim, we have developed the most advanced technology in the world in order to treat uh, people that were exposed to high level of radiation, uh, uh, damage from radiation. Our product is derived from placenta. We are taking placenta after full term delivery, and eventually we end up with a product that we can inject these placenta stem cells to any human being without genetic match or blood match. I can use our product and actually to inject anyone in this room in case of need uh, without any genetic match or blood match. In these days, as we are able to hear and see today with all the uh, previous speakers, uh, we see more and more threats coming on us, the civilians of the world, the citizens of the world. Uh, the main difference is that these threats are not limited to border or government or even continent. These threats are global threats, and eventually uh, it is something that all of us, uh, they are facing for, for all of us, the citizens of the world, uh, a challenge. And um, one thing that I would like to say, and a good, it's a good thing to say that we have so many ministers here. We as citizens, and I am a citizen of Israel, I do expect for my government uh, to make sure that we are protected, to make sure that we are able to preserve and maintain the world as we know it and our civilization as we know it. Even in these extreme conditions, like we're going to discuss, and as you were able to see in the video that we, we just, uh, we just uh, uh, showed. And we are facing time of mixture. I mean, the, the, the general population, all of us, as well as the combat units, the, the, the armed forces, are facing sometimes similar challenge, uh, challenges. And both of them, and equally, are uh, threatening challenges. And I think that this is our goal, that we need to make sure that we are developing new technologies, advanced technologies, that protect, in one hand, the armed forces. These armed forces are going to be in location and places, and we know it quite well here in Israel, uh, that they're going to uh, enter into a hostile environment and may face a, a, a location that they need the protection of the technologies. But also, all of us, as uh, citizens of our countries, we need to make sure, and our government have to make sure, that we hold the technologies that will be able to protect uh, also as, as, uh, as citizens. And one of the most terrifying threats, I think, for all of us, uh, that's, I think, as human beings, that's a, that's a ni nightmare, is the nuclear threat. The nuclear threat, it's, they have the potential to cause a ma major damage, to kill thousands of people in the immediate, uh, in the immediate, uh, uh, um, uh, in the, the immediate event, but it also has a longer, very devastating effect. And the nuclear threats can come from many, 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 many challenges, as we know, as we all know. 
The obvious one that all of us see on the, on the news every day is unresponsible countries, as we see in North Korea now, that are actually threatening the world for missile attack of nuclear, catastrophe, nuclear, nuclear um, missiles. It can be also a nuclear threat that is coming from a dirty bomb that a terrorist will place in a very uh, populated uh, city. We are seeing the terror, effect, the, the, the terror threats also very relevant for the nuclear plants themselves. All of us remember what happened in Belgium just a year ago when there was a real, real threat for the nuclear reactor or from, from a terror attack. And there is also the, the normal reason. It can be from natural disaster like happened in Fukushima five years ago that the reactor is melting or just from the aging of, of the reactors. I assume that all of you in your countries are using reactors or, or nuclear reactors either for research purposes as well as for a, a, a electricity, electricity or nuclear plants for manufacturing electricity. But one thing is very clear, no, we all think that we know how a nuclear event starts, nobody knows how it's going to end, and we need to be prepared for that. And this is exactly what my company is doing in the last five years. In the last five years, we developed this product. I'm holding in my hand a vial that contains 100 million placenta cells that, as I mentioned, can be injectable to any one of you, of us, without any genetic metal blood mesh. We were able to demonstrate that if we inject the cells, we are able to increase survival after a, a exposure to very high level of radiation from around 30% to close to 100%. We were able to, able to demonstrate to the regulators that our cells are assisting in recovery of the blood system of the, of the people that were exposed to radiation, as well as to protect the vital organ to make sure that we continue the survival of, of the population. So this is a really uh, game-changing technology that will enable us uh, to handle also a, 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 such catastrophes. The good news is that we are not doing it only by ourselves. In the last uh, few years, the US government, with the strong support of the National Institute of Health, the NIH, and recently also the, the US uh, Army or the DOD, they are joining and they're actually uh, partnering in, our, in this project. We have a full support and funding in this project. And this is something very interesting, I think, for all of you as leaders or ambassadors or diplomats in your countries. Uh, we are looking at the U.S. and they have a, a real uh, a strategic decision that they would like to enable technologies that will protect the armed forces as well as their civilian in case of catastrophe. And I think that this is something that uh, uh, all the government should look at it and see how they are, can participate in such, uh, in such a development. We are bringing this product. This product will be close in the market, very shortly in the market. If everything goes well, as we expect, the FDA should approve this product next year. And the, the goal is to stockpile the sales in the U.S. for case of catastrophe. We're going to start with the U.S., but we get more and more interest from additional countries. Recently, we signed an agreement in Fukushima in Japan, and we see more and more countries showing a lot of interest in that. And I think it's not only about science and protection. It's a part of a global phenomenon that I see that all the democratic countries in the, in the world should start to work together. We have many, many challenges nowadays, and I think that we have enough threats on our country and our society on the way that all of us live. And the only way to overcome these threats is to work together and to join forces to develop a better, a better control, technologies for, uh, for all of us. I'm running a biotechnology company, so it means that I'm a very optimistic guy. But I think that we are seeing all these threats and we heard a lot of discussion today. Uh, we should know that our world is probably in the best situation ever. The world is the safest place today ever, richest and well-fed ever in the history of the human being. But it means that it's our goal as, as leaders in our countries, business leaders, political leaders, it's our goal to make sure that we are protecting the, civil, the civilization as we know it today. It's not something that which is obvious, but it means that we have to develop more technologies, effort, science, and innovation to make sure that we are protecting the world uh, as we know it. And I think that this is the perfect place to call all of you. And uh, I will use uh, the Prime Minister uh, awards. You've seen the map. I mean, all of you representatives of the different countries that are not cooperating with pluristem or companies like us to develop a countermeasurement for threats like us, you are more than welcome to call me, not the Prime Minister, and uh, I'll be more than happy to cooperate on this one and to enable 
this advanced technology to your country, to your citizen, and uh, eventually to the entire world. Thank you very much.